Hey APO students, in this video we're going to discuss how to write an LEQ, the long essay question. This video has been updated to reflect the changes to the APOSH exam for the 2017-2018 school year. So let's begin by looking at what has changed. So you're given one question, but you choose from three options that are all on the same theme. You're given 40 minutes to write this essay. It should be the final thing you do on the APOSH exam is 15% of the total exam. So students must develop an argument and support it with an analysis of specific relevant historical evidence of their choosing. There are three types of LEQs that you might encounter. To me, the easiest one is the causation one. It could be a combination of things where it's asking you if you give nothing but causes, nothing but effects, or it could be a combination of causes and effects. So essentially in your thesis statement, the position that you need to be taking is, well, which is more significant, the causes or the effects? Continuity and change over time. What is more significant in your thesis statement? The changes or the continuities? Most students are pretty good about writing over what about what changed over time, but it's easy to forget what continued or what stayed the same. So again, as you craft your thesis statement, argue what is more significant, the changes or the continuities? Three, the final type of essay that you might encounter with an LEQ is comparison. Which is more significant, the similarities or the differences. Think about taking that position as you craft your thesis statement if you may, if you encounter that particular um, essay prompt. Let's take a look at a causation essay about the War of 1812. It's a pretty easy prompt and a pretty easy, pretty straightforward type of an LEQ. I'm going to use lots of lingo also. If you are unfamiliar with contextualization, or how to write a thesis statement, please refer back to any of my previous videos. I'll help you out with that as well. So coming out of the Jeffersonian democracy era, the U.S. was dead set on staying neutral and avoiding permanent foreign relationships. However, Great Britain greatly tested America's resolve to stay neutral through the Chesapeake versus Leopard affair, pre-Jeffersonian quasi-war. So what this student is doing is they're giving me events, they're giving me key terms, they're giving me specific events that led up to, well, the War of 1812, the prompt. It's kind of like the Star Wars opening crawl. It gives you background information about the, the movie, but it gives you nothing about the plot. And so it's a great way to think about earning that first point in an LEQ with your contextualization. But you don't go too far back. You don't want to go all the way back to, let's say, New Spain and the founding of Jamestown. That's way too far back. Um, but this is going to lead up. That's, that's far back enough to where it, it shows that it leads up to the War of 1812. Now we're going to get into the thesis part of it. So they begin with the counterpoint. Although the seizure of American cargo by British ships contributed to the declaration of war, there's their counterpoint right there. They're talking about how this contributed to it. Impressments and Native American tax had a greater impact on causing the War of 1812. So they're saying these two things, these two moments right here, impressments and then Native American attacks, they're greater causes. There's the argument. And then they finish it out by talking about some consequences. As a result, the U.S. reaffirmed their status as a country and as a major world player. So they address both parts of the causes and consequences. And then it's pretty clear that which they're arguing which is going to be the most important causes, which you've got impressments and the Native American attacks. Now, look at this first body paragraph, the strongest point they're going to make. They thought, and they, and they wrote about this in their thesis, the impressments were going to be the most significant cause. So they start off with a topic sentence, doing a great job of showing what exactly is the most significant cause. The topic sentence, the first sentence in your body paragraph, needs to be a little bit argumentative. And you see that happening right here when they say that the most significant cause British impressments on American ships. Now, what do you notice about this? I'm not going to read all these body paragraphs, but you've got them underlined right there as a result. Throughout all these events, Britain continually impressed, which caused. What do you notice about those, those phrases right there? What they're doing is they're, they're using level two terminology and language. They're showing the causes and the effects. This student in particular is doing a good job of showing how and why the evidence all works together. They're not just giving me a narrative. They're showing me what happened short term, what happened long term as well as a, as a result of British impressments. Also highlighted in red. It's not underlined, but what do you notice with these? Here are key terms sprinkled all throughout this particular paragraph. 
three to five key terms in a body paragraph usually will get you a good grade on a long essay question. Think about that as well. And let's look at the second body paragraph. You see the, the topic sentence, the first sentence in this body paragraph, the second most significant cause of the war are the British funded Native American attacks. And then they go on to talk a little bit more using some more of that terminology. As a result, you see calls at the very beginning of it. And then lots and lots of SFI and key terms are used in this particular paragraph, which makes it a strong paragraph number two. And then finally, as we go through there, the greatest consequence of the War of 1812 was that it reaffirmed that the U.S. was an important and permanent country. So there you have it again, that topic sentence, finishing it out. Although the Treaty of Ghent didn't gift new lands to the U.S., the war pushed back many natives, effectively gaining more land for the Americans. And here we go again with the terminology, as a result, the size of the country greatly increased. And then you also have um, where this student makes mention of Andrew Jackson, William Henry Harrison, going on to become war heroes, which springboards them to become American presidents. This person clearly has a good idea, a, a decent understanding of the concept of the, of the first the causes of the War of 1812, but then later some of the consequences as well. What do you notice, though, about this particular essay? Did they spend an entire paragraph talking about the Battle of Tippecanoe or the Battle of New Orleans? They avoid that, and but they still use that terminology in there to back up their point. And so it's not necessarily giving me an entire essay about the Battle of New Orleans, but you do sometimes um, can you can get a point or you can get good a good grade by mentioning the battle and then just cutting to the chase. What is the significance of it? You don't have to give me every little detail about pirates and so forth helping in the Battle of New Orleans. Um, just kind of get to the point. And make sure to include that in your essay, and you'll you'll uh, set yourself up for a lot of success. So I hope that that makes a lot of sense. You're not giving me a narrative of the War of 1812. You're just arguing what are the greatest causes, maybe the greatest consequences, and so forth. All right, I hope that was helpful. Please let me know if you still have some questions. Be glad to help out. Thanks for watching.